Last episode, Egel Brook trained hard to lead us to some important wins, but now with all eyes on continued success, can we do it again this time out? Hey, what's going on guys? Respect the Jeff here with another episode in this Schalke career. And it's an important match right away here. We take on Köln sitting in 15th place. For those of you who remember all the way back at the start of the career, Köln was the team who sent us down to be relegated after a really tight match. Uh, and we're eventually the team that sent us out of control, spiraling down into the third division. So we'll be out for revenge. We faced off with them a couple times in this career, but this will be the first time back in division one. So it is an important match for sure. All right, so we get straight to it here. Wearing our third kits for the first time this season. Huge shout out to everyone in the Discord who got involved, helping us make kits and inspiring some of these. They turned out great, so huge, huge shout out to everyone involved in that. But unfortunately, we find ourselves down uh, less than 10 minutes into this game and desperate to get back on level terms. At least Eagle Brook charging into the box, trying to make some amount of space and eventually pull something out of absolutely nothing. How about that from our number 19? He has been in top top form and really looks to be leading the line this season but this game is far from over Köln put another one into the back of the net to make it 2-1 and really uh, have our hopes of winning this match start to slip away Egal Brook desperately trying to change the tides here with a shot from distance that tests the goalkeeper to his limits but the high press from the team catches them out again and eventually Amadou Onana who's really developing a knack for scoring goals puts another into the back of the net for Schalke 2-2 and it's game on here with not a lot of time left both teams are desperate to make their mark and go on to try to win this game but it's Schalke who get the final chance of the game Michael Maiden coming on and a lovely little dink over the top Egal Brook fires that one past the goalkeeper how about that to win the game 3-2 lovely lovely performance from Schalke and it's a marked difference from the time we faced Köln four seasons ago to send us down just how much have we grown since then it seems to be a lot and we take it to the press conference here a little bit of dramatic fashion <laughs> the questions they're asking is around uh, if we're condemning them to relegation this time or not uh, a lot of season left to play so I don't know about that uh, but it's a great performance from us specifically from Egal Brook once again how much has he developed this season so we take the three points and on we march and it's straight back to action here. The lineup really looking the same over these last couple of games. Uh, Michael Maiden makes the starting lineup again after some impressive performances. We're sitting in ninth place right now, honestly way higher than I thought we would be uh, early this season when we were starting out our campaign. We were definitely up there with the favorites for relegation, but the way we're playing, I think if we can keep this up, we're even looking at a top half finish. Don't want to get ahead of ourselves here, but we'll see how things finish come the end of the season. Hugo Hawkins on one of his trademark runs out of the back line. Egal Brooks step overs waiting for the run, uh, but he makes one himself in the box, chips it back. Amadou Onana, how about that for a finish? Well, our center mid, uh, technically a center defensive mid, has been getting forward and scoring goals in abundance. This time it's Brook to Onana, uh, who's also getting in there with some assists as well, our number 19. But we love to see it. The team really flying high with confidence here. This time it's Evan Rotundo getting forwards in an unselfish layoff for Egal Brook, who finishes for a second. It's been confident, dominating play here from Schalke, although a little overconfident perhaps, trying to play out from the back, giving it away. Bradlow makes the first save, but he can't stop that rocket off of the second effort to pull one back for Mujin Gladbach. As time winds down, things starting to get a little tense here as her once uh, domineering lead starts to fade away. Another header put past Bredlow with six minutes left to equalize 2-2, and Schalke with limited time left to get something back on the score sheet, and Ozat setting up Egal Brook shot straight at the goalkeeper. And unfortunately for us, that was the last chance of the game. So some points dropped, still a draw, not too bad all in all, and we move on. So two games out of the way, but this one is our most important yet. We take on Bayern Munich, uh, historically the best team in the league, but more importantly for this one, we take on the brother of C.D. Sané, the older brother Leroy, who is having success with the German Giants. And now it's up to us to see if we can get a little bit of a shock result here. One of the top sides, not only in Germany, but in the world. It's going to be a really difficult one. Hugo Hawkins looks up for the task, though, closing down with high intensity. 
and we're trying to establish our style of play on the game. It's tough against a defense like this, but Egal Brook looks up for it, looks really dangerous here early in the game. Rockets a shot off the hands of the goalkeeper, and our first good chance of the game goes missing here. Still nil-nil, but Serge Gnabry centers it back for that man again, Leroy Sané, who scores the first goal of the game here. It's an easy tap-in for him, but it was a great, well-worked team goal there from Bayern Munich. And we find ourselves on the back foot here, but throwing everything we got at it. Evan Rotundo rockets one again straight at the goalkeeper, unable to test him too much. It's been great pressure, though, and a huge, huge mistake from the Bayern goalkeeper there allows Rotundo to get in off the follow-up and literally pass it into the back of the net. That's one of the most shocking mistakes I think I've ever seen in Korea career mode as a whole, let alone in FIFA 21, uh, and it gives us a goal. We're back on level terms just like that. CD Sané up against his older brother. How about that for a piece of skill? He looks up for the challenge so far. Let's see if he can't uh, get a little bit of end product on it and maybe score a goal or grab an assist here. Egal Brook looking to do it all on his own up top, though, trying to find some amount of space. And he's just so patient in the box. Egal Brook taking his man on. Lovely touch inside. Oh, my word. Egal Brook take a bow. How about that? Scores an absolute banger against the German Giants, Bayern Munich. That's got to be up there for goal of the season, uh, at least for our team, let alone the league. He took on so many men, so confident in possession. And how about that for a finish perfectly in the top corner? But we have more problems to worry about. Bayern still have something to say about this. Equalizing 2-2, Serge Gnabry uh, receives the ball over the top. And it is an absolute uh, belter into the back of the net here. With time winding down, 12 more minutes. Bayern again trying to play out from the back. But our high press again catching them out. We look really confident in shutting play down. And Evan Rotundo puts it into the back of the net. 3-2, we are scoring some worldies out here, and it's the young players who look the most up for it. Rotundo had no right to score a goal like that, and it's enough to win us the game. 3-2, an absolute thriller against Bayern, and we've shown what we can do on our day, taking down one of the best teams in the entire world in spectacular fashion. And honestly, I think on our day, we could be up there with anyone. So much room for growth still in the team, but a lot of star power already developing right here and now. All right, well, some fantastic results in the league here, but we switch our focus to the German Cup where we take on Dusseldorf. I'm going to rotate the squad a lot. We have a lot of players who haven't had too many minutes this season, but are looking to make an impact, specifically uh, Lukas Koritowski up top, who gets some more minutes. And let's see what these players can do here. Remy Vita and Luca Campanile, notable additions at the back line, as well as Griesbeck, who hasn't had too many minutes since last season. All right, here we go. Some familiar faces in the lineup. Among them is Marco Fabian, who we also haven't seen much of this season. The 35-year-old was really important to our success over the last two or three seasons, uh, but with a lot of new recruitments this year and the team doing so well without him, he's been pretty limited to a squad role. But I think having seen a couple seasons of him play, we all know what he's capable of. Uh, plays like that actually slipping in behind Lukas Koritowski with a great chance on goal. He's making some really good runs, the young striker. We're starting to see flashes of why he was so good on loan last season. But the striker who actually makes waves in this game is Egal Brook. Scores the first, and then again Marco Fabian slides him through for a second to put this game to bed. With 15 minutes remaining, Egal Brook is on fire. He just can't stop scoring, and he's getting better with every passing game. So it's a comfortable cup win all in all. Some great talking points and impressive performances, and we're on to the next round. All right, but it's straight back to league action as the games come hot and fast at this point in the season. We're up to eighth place. Honestly, I did not think this team would have been capable of anywhere near uh, this league position we're in right now, but we're doing it, and honestly, we're pretty uh, good chunk into the season already, so if we can keep up this type of form, honestly, I think we could have a fantastic finish in our first season back in the Bundesliga. And to me, the best part is that we haven't had to rely on individuality too much. You can remember a couple seasons ago when basically everything we did had to go through Florinel Coman. But the team as a whole is playing so well right now. 
Uh, maybe spoke too soon with Wolfsburg scoring against us there. La Cazette, absolute screamer from outside the box, uh, straight past the goalkeeper. But, I mean, overall, we have been fantastic, and it's thanks to all of the players getting involved. We have such a good midfield attack. Honestly, defensive base now with Hawkins really stepping it up, and you can see the team is only going to get better with so many young players. In here, and again, the team finds themselves back on level terms after Egal Brook finishes off a great move. He just can't stop scoring. But now the question is, can we get ourselves in front here and grab three points against a really solid Wolfsburg side? It's been a pretty even matchup so far, some good chances for both teams, uh, but honestly, if uh, some of the past games are anything to go by, I wouldn't put a late winner out of our reach. We did it against Bayern, uh, and if we could do it against them, <laughs> I feel like at this point, confidence-wise, we could do it against anyone in the world. CD Sané puts a ball over the top, looking for Onana, settles kindly to find the feet of Evan Rotundo. Well, just as I was talking about a late winner, that is exactly what happens. Lovely strike there from Rotundo. Lovely team play and the motivation to go on and fight for a winner. We see the game out for three big points against a big, big team, and we've done it again. So it's been a fantastic run, mostly thanks to this guy, Egil Brook, four goals in the last three games. We're sitting in eighth right now, level on points with Eartha Berlin, who we take on in this matchup. It's the fight for seventh place. If, and it's a big if, we win this game, we could be in contention, honestly, for a European spot over the next couple of games, uh, but it's going to be a tough road ahead of us here. We come under so much pressure early in the game. Hugo Hawkins makes sure uh, that we keep the score lines level, but 50 minutes in, we need to do something a little more offensively. So it's Marvin Duxch, who honestly, with the resurgence of Egal Brook, hasn't had too many minutes since his injury, but he shows he's still got something left in the tank there. Lovely finish and great positioning to find himself a goal after the team struggled big time up to this point in the match and it sets us apart there. 90 minutes gone in a hard fought game. We grab three big, big points over Eartha Berlin and it's a lovely performance again. So that last win seeing us up to seventh place, who would have thought Schalke were capable of this? And we don't look like stopping anytime soon. Egal Brook finishes early in this one to put us ahead again. And you can just tell the difference in this game is the players really believe we've done it against the biggest teams and we know what's possible at this point. And honestly, I think that's just unlocked a better side of us. Bozduan coming back into the side, again, one who hasn't been guaranteed minutes too much after his injury earlier on, but he looks to be back to something close to top form at least, scoring a great goal there. And Philip Oaks finishes off the penalty that Michael Maiden wins to cap this win off three goals for Schalke. And it's another huge victory for the team who is flying high at the moment. And at this point, it looks like nothing can stop us. All right, so a ton of games will take a little break here uh, and take care of some contracts. In the meantime, we got a couple players here running out of contract at the end of the season. As we approach January, I'd like to secure them, specifically Marvin Ducks, who definitely still has a role to play in this team, even though Egal Brook might be our starter at this point. We offer him an important role in the squad, but he is insistent. He wants to be the number one man up top and be a crucial starter. We just can't let that happen. I mean, he's going to get a lot of minutes if he stays, but with Egal Brook playing so well, we can't necessarily swap him back out. So, up starts the media coverage of this situation, and with all eyes on Dutch, we get back to league action. Well, we return to action, but with all of the focus and the talk of the team about Marvin Duxch's contract situation, it looks like heads might be elsewhere. We get off to a bad start, Leverkusen scoring early, and the team looking really shambolic here. Hawkins uncharacteristically giving the ball away out of the back line, and again, some incisive passing finds its way past the rest of our defense and into the back of the net. Two goals down now, and the team is reeling, so on comes a familiar face here, Marvin Duxch. Amid all of the speculation about him not signing a new contract, he still has a very important role to play with us here. Back to goal, plays it back to Egal Brook, the two of them linking up, and Brook looking for some sort of way through. Back to Duxch, who can't quite slip that final ball through. Maybe a lack of concentration, but whatever the reason, Schalke unable to get anything out of this game, and unfortunately, it's the first loss in a while. 
So rumors continuing to circulate after that match, Dutch is attracting interest from many suitors after failing to sign a new contract extension with us and with his situation running out of time here, we don't want to necessarily let him go for free at the end of the season, especially considering the financial situation this team is in right now. We look to be safe, uh, things might be different if relegation was a realistic threat for us at this point, but tons of offers already coming in. And unfortunately for us, if Marvin Ducks is insistent on being a crucial member of this team, he's got to be sold. So we get six million for our trouble selling him off to RC Celta. Uh, hopefully he will thrive in Spain. Best wishes, uh, but we need a new striker in the squad now. If Eagle Brook is going to be our number one, we need someone who's going to confidently uh, step in as a rotation option or maybe compete for a starting spot, but not necessarily be a guaranteed starter every week. So we have a couple players on our radar. But we have two big problems working against us here. One is the financials. We can't sign a player for more than the six million we got from Ducks. We need to preserve our money and make sure we stay afloat in terms of wages and uh, paying off the financial debts we have. But also finding a player who's willing to step in and be a rotation option for us while still being competitive enough for the Bundesliga. So we turn our eyes to Marcus Ingvartsen, a really solid striker, 29 years old. He could be an uh, experienced option for us up top, which we desperately need amongst all the youth in the team. He's happy to be a rotation player. We'll take him on those kind of wages as well. So we have a new addition to our squad here, and even better, we got a new real in-game face for him as well following the signing. Ingvartsen takes number 11, and a $2.3 million deal that could end up being a bargain. Really solid money for a player of his caliber, and he'll help us hopefully through the rest of this season push on and be a rotation option for Egel Brook up top. So with that said, we focus our attention back in on the league here. It's Wolfsburg again for the second time this episode. New signing Ingvartsen on the bench for this one, and let's get to it. Well, it's been a whirlwind the last couple of days here with Ducks out, Ingvartsen in. It's been a really uh, busy couple of moments there in the uh, transfer market for Schalke. Fortunately for us, though, we don't need too many other options here in January. I think our team is solid as is. Uh, with the way performances have been going, but it's a little bit of a rocky start as the captain gets caught out with a free kick given away just at the edge of the area, and it's that man again who punishes us for it. Lacazette scoring a lovely free kick from distance. Now can Schalke do something to turn the tides of this game? CD Sané slipped through with a lovely ball out from that left back position, and he's charging into the box now. What can he do top of the box for Rotundo? A lovely little dink over the top. Amadou Onana finishes. That is an unbelievable team goal from Schalke. Completely against the run of play, but we have the quality when it counts. Although speaking of quality, it's Onana who gives the ball away for another chance in our third and eventually it's converted there by Renato Sanchez to make it 2-1. It's been another exciting matchup. Uh, so with a goal in need, we turn to new signing Ingvartsen to come up top alongside Egal Brook and see if we can push on here in the remaining 30 minutes to find a goal of our own. Ingvartsen getting some good link up play in there with Bozdewan who eventually slips it through and Egal Brook the one to cap the move off once again. 2-2 Schalke back on level terms and it's been great play from us so far. Great resilience too to come back twice. Now can we do it a third time and get ourselves in front for the first time in this match. Philip Oaks looking for a ball through. Eventually found by Rotundo though. Bozdewan charging into space and he looks for the head of Egal Brook. It's out for a corner kick and the one to watch here has been Evan Rotundo. He's running play out of midfield. The youngest player in the squad I believe and probably uh, one of the best as well. He has been growing rapidly these last couple seasons. Arbner Aliyu out of the back line with a crunching challenge. It's Ingvartsen with some fantastic hold up play. The reason exactly that we decided to sign a strong target man style striker to accompany Brook up top and he sets up Evan Rotundo who finishes the game off 3-2. It took uh, over the allotted 92 minutes of the game uh, scoring here in the 93rd but the young Evan Rotundo gets the job done. He is making waves in the Bundesliga Liga here growing rapidly and putting in some really really good performances so hopefully we'll be able to keep a hold of him uh, for the longer term future but it's a great performance from the team again and on we go.
All right, well, all that said and done, a uh, ton of action here. It brings us to deadline day uh, in January. Fortunately, I don't think we need anything else done with the squad, and with the lack of anyone pushing for a move elsewhere, it takes us through relatively unchanged, a striker in, a striker out, uh, all said and done. It is gonna hurt to lose Marvin Ducksh, but it had to be done the way the club is run at this point in time. Uh, we couldn't afford to let his contract run up at the end of the season. So with that said, it's another round here against Bayern Munich. Let's see if we can do the double. Well, it's definitely gonna be a big ask, but we're gonna try to do our best here against Bayern Munich. Two wins over them would be a statement in the league. Uh, and if anyone's gonna get the job done, it's probably Egal Brook, the number five goal scorer in the league this season for a player of his age, playing for a team of our caliber. Uh, that is very, very impressive, especially considering he didn't necessarily have a fantastic start to the season, but it's turning out to be a fantastic finish if he can keep this kind of form up. Unfortunately, Bayern look up for this game. Under 10 minutes into the game, Thomas Lamar sneaks one past the goalkeeper and into the back of the net. But it's definitely not going to be without a fight. Goring Stankovic with a lovely challenge to set up the counterattack here for Schalke. Sidi Sané looks to do it himself and it's blocked by the defense. Not a bad effort at all though. Into the second half here, Bayern looking to uh, put themselves even further in front. Joshua Kimmich uh, almost slid in there, but it's us who get the better chance. Egel Brook almost. It was a really solid first touch, but the goalkeeper got to it. So it's a little rotation here. Boz Dewan and Ingvartsen coming on. Can these fresh legs make some sort of difference with us? Under 10 minutes remaining here, and Bayern score a second. Well, despite all of our efforts here, we have been second best to be fair to them, and it's Kingsley Coman who dashes our hopes of a win with a second goal there. But some high pressure from Schalke with only a couple minutes left here from Marcus Ingvartsen who sets it up for himself. Well, uh, that's a second howler from the Bayern back line there. Uh, the last time we faced them, the clear giveaway for Rotundo, and now this time, stripped of possession and some poor marking leads to our goal. Uh, but in the end, it's 2-1. It's a disappointing defeat, but we gave it our all. Not a bad performance, all in all. And it's a loss for the team, but we keep our heads held high, and on we go to the next. So, next game, it is back to the cup. We're in the quarterfinals. We made it to the semis last season. Can we do it again? It would be a fantastic feat for a team, uh, the stature of Schalke as they stand really, uh, I think it's fair to say we're probably punching above our weight, making deep cup runs twice in a row with the kind of squad that we have. But like I mentioned earlier, uh, we're definitely more of a collective. We don't have a ton of superstars on the team or anything like that. Uh, and we definitely play better than you would expect given the uh, overall overall ratings the players on paper but it's really down to the philosophy of the team I think the way we play works so well it's a system that really suits the players uh, we've seemed to get the best out of the players we have at our disposal and honestly with them being so young it's only going to get better from here Luca Campanile the right back making a run up the pitch now and he sets up Rotundo for the opening goal of the game how about that what an absolutely unbelievable run Luca Campanile all the way down the pitch he did it all himself and he set up Evan Rotundo for a really uh, clean finish there at the end of everything. It's not a bad way to start the game at all. Schalke up and running already and Marcus Ingvartsen on his first start here in a Schalke jersey definitely looking to make an impression with a shot from distance not going to trouble the goalkeeper from that kind of range unless it's perfection and that shot definitely wasn't but you like to see him high on confidence regardless although a little dink past the defense there sees us uh, have an equalizer scored against us this game definitely not over as we approach halftime 45 minutes into this match it is game on 1-1 the scoreline remains Michael Maiden looking to open up an opportunity for Luca Campanile cutting inside with some lax marking he continues his run what to finish Luca Campanile is having the game of his life well after being displaced by Felix Paslak for a lot of this season he's actually been playing it left back this game Campanile uh, for the tired legs of Philip Oaks who needed a rest and he's certainly making an impact here as sort of a, an inverted fullback I suppose uh, and it's really worked out for us so far in this game Michael Maiden charging forwards for Marcus Ingvartsen Patient play here from Schalke. Can we grab a third? Dink over the top. Yes, Ingvartsen scores. How about that? He's hit the ground running our number 11, and the team as a whole is doing fantastic. 
3-1, we're going to the semifinals for a second year running. Who would have thought this possible? The team is really starting to click at this point, and it seems like on our day, anything is possible. So, a huge couple of results in these last few games. Uh, the signings look to be fitting in, and everyone playing their part so far, and it has been fantastic from the Royal Blues. All right, well, all said and done here, it's been an unbelievable run of form. Like I said, we're out of the semifinals, a couple games left to play here, but to be perfectly honest, not the hardest couple of teams that could be left in the competition. We could make a really good run, not to get ahead of ourselves, but we'll see how that pans out uh, once the matchups are released. Taking a look at the squad and how they've been doing to date, it's been crazy uh, how much Ego Brook has started to find his form this season. 13 goals and 23 appearances, honestly, especially considering that he really didn't start scoring until maybe 10, 15 appearances in. <laughs> so it's been a really solid record from him the last handful of games. Evan Rotundo also stepping up to the plate in a big way this season, as well as Amadou Onana. Uh, despite some reliance on Brook up top, we are getting goals from elsewhere. And there's still plenty of season left to play as well. We'll see how things pan out for some other key players like Hugo Hawkins, even new signing Marcus Ingvartsen. And a reminder, if you guys want to check out all of these exact stats for yourself, go check out respectedjeff.com. I keep a pretty up-to-date tab of all the players and their stats for the season, and you can get an in-depth understanding of the team as a whole. So with that said, uh, taking a look at our next couple of games, the calendar here is packed. I'm honestly going to try to work through the rest of the season in next episode uh, so we can kind of wrap things up as we get towards FIFA 22 and get another good season or two in after that. We'll see how far we can take this team. Honestly, I think sky's the limit the way we've been playing. Also, if you guys are interested in getting a little more active, feel free to join the Discord link in the description. It's free. We've been having some great discussions, like I mentioned, about the kits, what we'll do for signings, things like that, and you can be a part of it. In the meantime, if you've just been enjoying the content, please feel free to subscribe. Helps the channel out a lot, and I'll be back soon with next episode. But until then, I'm Respected Jeff, and I'll see you next time.